Kenya, Austin, who happened to be the director of digital economy in the Nigerian Communications Commission. And I am highly privileged to be working under such, but the Austin would have loved to be here in person because he is very, very passionate about that has already caught up with us as a nation and the world at large. And every one of us, one way or the other, we are already players in the digital economy ecosystem. So when we, when we are talking about digital economy, it is something that is already known but possibly you are a player without knowing that you are already there. Can we go into the introductions? Now, through the history of mankind, man has graduated from the timid countries. Man has graduated from one stage of development because man was created in the image of God a man is never contented with where he is. So there has always been a drive that it can be better than where I am today. And we have seen developments taking place for those who have traveled around the world, those who have had the privileges of watching, uh, seeing clips from all over the world. You see that the level of development and the speed as of today is quite alarming. So the extent and rapidity of technological advancements that culminates into the fourth industrial revolution, which is a driver of the global digital transformation, is already moving ahead as we speak. The world is already moving ahead to the fifth industrial revolution. So we are under obligation to catch up, and this is why. The, the topic, the theme of this conference is, is so apt. Leveraging space technologies to accelerate. Accelerate means we already have it with us, but we are not moving at the required pace. We are not where we should have identified that space technology is very apt for us to accelerate possibly even take the leadership position we should have in Africa. Please, can you move on? Oh, I can also use my own slides. Thank you. Now, digital economy, yes. Digital economy, what exactly do you define digital economy to be? Different people give digital economy different definitions, but the simplest of all understanding of digital economy, it is an economy that applies digital technologies in every aspect of economic activities, every aspect of life, including governance. Now, I'm not going to be dwelling fully or reading through the, all the slides, but I'll just be speaking to them. The World Economic Forum said the paradigm of digital economy permeates all aspects of society. And that includes the way people interact. Some time ago, you need to see, I mean, you want to speak to your person, you want to see your person. Some time ago, we have to queue somewhere to make a call. Or you have to book to travel to go and see somebody, the person, or you want to do shopping. You have to travel. Some people will travel to London to all different parts of the world to do shopping. But today, the paradigm of digital economy has altered, and we are living with this alteration. The economy it has altered the economy landscape. The skills needed to get a good job today is no longer what it used to be. Before, you will need a first class degree for you to say you are applying for certain jobs, even when it is in public service. But today, we are digital economy, we are in the era of the digital economy where skills have been placed above 
certificate, paper certificate. Now, knowledge. The, our emerging digital economy has the potential to generate new scientific research, which is what the space sector of the economy is supposed to drive. It's supposed to take us through the breakthroughs that will fuel job opportunities and economic growth. Next, please. And then, I want to say that there are components. Digital economy is divided into some basic components. Three of these components major. Under these components, we have, are we there? We have the e-government infrastructure. The bedrock upon which digital economy thrives is called e-infrastructure. If you do not get the infrastructure right, you will just be a mere dreamer if you think of implementing digital economy because it runs on certain infrastructure that we are going to see as we proceed. It runs on e-commerce. E-commerce is highly developed in Nigeria. Despite the, uh, the paucity of our infrastructure, the e-commerce in Nigeria is highly, highly developed. And many of us, or if not all, are already playing in this realm of e-commerce. Now, e-business, what we mean when, I, when we talk of e-business, we are looking at sourcing, manufacturing, production, and marketing. That is one area that we could say we are lagging as a nation. That company, that part of, hello? Are you with me? Nobody's with me. If I can get the controls, I will love it. Now, what is, what, we, what are technologies and skills? I'm flying over some of them because of the time. Digital economy, technologies, skills, and ecosystem. If they will display by the slide that I have here, you will see that digital economy is highly, highly packed and loaded. Here, under the ecosystem of digital economy and technologies, we see you will see health represented by telemedicine, fixed broadband, mobile broadband, mobile networks, hyper-connectivity. There are so many here that I wish um, control this. Can the audience here yeah. and we highlighted fixed broadband, mobile broadband, mobile networks, and hyper-connectivity. Because digital industry 4.0 in itself is being driven by the fifth generation communication, the generation of wireless communication networks. Today we are talking of 5G in Nigeria. MTN has won 5G. Uh, Airtel has won the license uh, uh, to, to, to deliver service on 5G. 5G, the essence of 5G is that we should have limitless bandwidth because you have so much connections as an individual. You require to, for you to effectively play in the digital economy of, uh, of today. You require so much bandwidth in your house to connect with everything in your house, every person around your ecosystem, your office, your, your, your community, everything, connectivity is the word. And 5G was meant to be this. In other parts of the world, 5G is already a forgotten conclusion because they are already moving to 6G. Yes. While we are trying to even start the 5G out there, recently we noticed that the TBN came up with the policy. And what is TBN trying to do? Cash to introduce cashless economy. 
TBN has introduced digital currency. How many of us are playing in the digital currency? We are lacking one basic infrastructure, which is the broadband, the requisite broadband capacity to be able to drive an economy as huge as Nigeria. Nigeria is over 200 million people. And you remember that Nigerians are highly read and highly educated people, even here, where we are, in health, in education, in, in uh, uh, different uh, employment, in jobs, and all those. How do you play this? So, we, the, the, this thing, the, the digital economy, like I said, is riding on the back of the fourth industrial revolution, which in itself is driven by the factory generation uh, uh, wireless communication. Now, I'll proceed from here. Now, this is what I was saying for you to, I wanted you to see. The house, this digital economy has the promise of so much. Is it in terms of technologies? Is it in terms of skills? These are some of the major skills, some of the major uh, technologies that will be driving the ecosystem of digital economy. And how far are we with this? In commerce, like I said, we have ad adopted and adapted to commerce. But what about the technologies? What about the skills? And uh, later will also be able to share with us some of the things that the Commission is doing. Okay. Oh. The e-commerce, I talked about the e-business. Now, here we see a lot of skills. Our educational system unfortunately has always been tailored to book reading, reading of books. For you to play in the digital economy, skills are very, very critical and much more important than even the paper. I, I, got, I got to know of a, a child, young boy, not up to 18 years, the father pushed him instead of seeking admission for university, he pushed him to go to ICANN. And he, I, I, he handed him over to a friend who is the ICANN uh, or the And he said, he started, he said, train him. I want him to get skills and not certificate. And today, that boy is ICANN certified below you know, 20, and he did not have to go to the university before coming to go around. Skills are critical in digital economy because people have always feared that, ah, with all this uh, digitalization, with the, all the revolution coming in, that means jobs, people are going to lose jobs. No. When telecom was going to be uh, liber uh, liberalized in Nigeria, those who worked in Nigeria, I believe some of us may be here, were scared we are losing jobs. But if we do sub jobs, no. Rather, you saw that liberalization brought about a boost in the telecom industry. And today, if you look at the statistics that we have in the, in the which have been published in the website of the commission, you see that the nation has attained so much. I looked at uh, the current uh, statistics for uh, broadband penetrations or subscriptions. We have over 90 million people. Before you feel to be able to even have access to a telephone, they are not on top of even internet, the dialogue internet. So let me go forward. Industry for okay, 4.0, I talked about industry 4.0 as the bedrock of uh, digital economy. Why is it the bedrock? Because if you check here, in the, in, in, in the first industrial revolution, we were, we were operating on mechanization, steam engines, water, because before they are prior to this, things were done manually. 
we use horses for travels, we use uh, 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 animals for our tillings and all this. But industry 1.0 gave us mechanization. 2.0 gave us technological electrification, production lines and mass production and all. 3.0 took us to computer, internet, digital manufacturing, robotics, IT, and all, all of that. Now, we are at the industry 4.0, where we are saying it is going to bring about lots of jobs, and I said no. Robotics are created by man. Robotics should be maintained by man, and robotics will be controlled by man. All we need is to qualify ourselves to get acquire the requisite skills which are readily available today because you don't need to travel to London to learn certain skills. Now you go online, you can learn a whole lot of skills irrespective of your age. You can acquire a whole lot of skills. So now the industrial revolution, I'll, I'll still run over this because it still goes back to tell us the uh, enabling technologies that run both ways. But very critical to us here is that 5G. 5G because people have already gone ahead. If you must catch up, if you must play the catch up, you cannot go back to start from 2G, 3G. 4G, no. We must try to catch up where they are because they are not going to wait for you. They are already moving ahead. The internet of things, the contact of activity we, we are seeking can only be driven by a technology like 5G that has very high bandwidth, that high, very high latency. I'm sure we are not enjoying our phones as of today. Now, there is a ranking and rating of the digital competitiveness of nations in the world. It was of interest to us to bring this to our notice that out of 63 nations that were ranked by different bodies, statistical buildings, out of 63 that were ranked, if you look here, you will not see Nigeria the leader of Africa. If you look here, you will only, you only see South Africa. And the South Africa that many, many people who are traveling South Africa will help in South Africa. But when where they are in digital competitiveness is far just above average, 51.24 percent. That is their readiness, the level of readiness. They assess different criteria and factors to determine your grade or level of readiness. That means that we have not attained a readiness that will even put us on the ranking table. So you understand why this team of this, Mr. Chairman, congratulations, because for you to have chosen this topic, that I mean the team, is very apt, is very kind. We need to accelerate. When you know that you are running behind time, you press the accelerator a little bit higher, harder, for you to get, uh, to even try to at, at least be on the queue. But of course, as it is, we are not on the queue for now. The global economy, if you are not there, so if you are not there, you are left behind. Today, I, I have an experience in November, I went for training. You know before, when you travel, you carry your master card, or any of the cards you're using, the cards are international. So if you have money in your bank, in your account, you can be able to carry that card, and you go there. You don't know what happens at the back end when you slot out your card and make payments abroad. Until this time around, um, we, because of our economic doldrum that has impacted on our usage of foreign exchange, 
I had to buy foreign currency. And but when I got to my hotel, I booked a hotel. When I got to the hotel in London, and so when you, you, it will make you to appreciate what the CBN is trying to do. The CBN is trying to save you and prepare you for the world. Because as it is today, we are left behind. We are still battling with the refunding cash. The CBN is trying to get you ready for digitalized economic play. If you have to be in the global play, now you must be on that platform. The major reason why we are not using our MasterCards abroad is because of our um, foreign reserve that is depleted, highly depleted, and the government has to find a way to still leave the country to be afloat. And you are only going to your hand there. When you put your card, you are actually dipping your hand into the foreign to help us. Mark Bogert that stated that this whole platform in the sky is really going to destroy virtually every industry. What we are now seeing is a wave of interest from companies and corporates that traditionally had no interest in space before. If you look at the kind of, the number of space crafts that have been released to space, on a daily basis, almost on a daily basis. Like, then they, they, have, they, are satisfied, they have saturated, they have finished, I think, with the, the, even the earth, the, our stratosphere, and they are going back, they are looking for even uh, holiday locations in, in, in Mars, in the moon, and in other planets. But, we are looking for what is down here first. The space technologies that will help us to move our... Jesus. <laughs> they are going to of the, It's a business. It's a big time business. Space technology. And you see the competition, the rat race is massive. Now, what are the technologies or in the, what is the ecosystem like that we need? If you look at, we have the satellites up there. We need the high altitude platform stations. We need maybe there are terrestrial balloons that also are used to produce to provide connectivity. Because today the challenge we have here with where the SEC has licensed infrastructures to deploy fiber. Fiber is a wonderful infrastructure on the earth for you to drive broadband. But fiber has limitations because first, let's take the Nigeria case. Today, you want, you want to deploy, somebody has the money, the resources, you want to deploy fiber to the northeast, northwest, or southeast. Is it possible to do that? No. They are limited. That is assuming that the resources are available. Now, where the other part is the resources are not even there because to, the, to deploy standard fiber with, with uh, converted optical dots, the cost per meter is mind blowing. It is highly, very expensive. To so the licenses of the commission, have, they have gotten the license for some years now, but they are not able to move because they were expecting subsidy or mobilization to be to go to the fields. But the li a license expects when you were seeking for a license, you said, "I have the wherewithal to do something," and then you are given the license and you are told, "Go into the field and do that." Now we are stagnated somehow. Because they don't have. Now, the state governors in your country, and this is why those of us who have influence, we need to also speak to our state governments. Because they don't understand. 
When you want to lay fiber on the ground, governments will demand that you come to pay them right of way fees, charges. The kind of charges that network operators who came here to provide you the wings that you need to fly are being imposed or a wind. And so much that it takes a lion heart for you to do business in Nigeria. Now, what, what do we have? We have so many challenges. If fiber in Nigeria is wired, the little you see in South Africa that put them on the table is because the entire South African ground has been wired. In fact, they have shut down their fiber producing companies because they feel they have almost finished wiring the whole, the, the whole country. Now, what do we do? Do we continue crying wolf, wolf, wolf? So what is the alternative? That was why, actually, the commission like my EVC has said to the representative earlier, licenses have been issued and permits issued for foreign <coughs> satellite service providers to come and deploy their services here. If you look at that, that if you are looking for your key, you can just whistle. I mean, you whistle the right technology that that one already existing. Do we have different technologies that we could apply? But you will need data. You will need service. You will need connection. You know what it takes you for you to sit down and say you want to prepare a five-page presentation, and you have to run through the nets. How can we achieve this connectivity? It's practically impossible. The network, the licenses, the service providers in the country will want to do it. But our infrastructure policy is a major limitation for them. What do you do? We look at the uh, space technologies. Like the very last thing that the, the, the space technology we looked at here, yeah, we saw the satellites. Besides the satellite, the junior brothers of the satellites are the high altitude platform stations. That if you put up one over this country, it can cover the whole, it can be connectivity and even broadband access on the whole country. Now, we have other, the other little platforms that we could do, but we're looking at the space. Since the ground is so overburdened, what do we do? Let's go up. Up there, whatever you put there, it's difficult for anybody to say they are cutting fiber in Nigeria to travel on the road. Even the little fibers that were laid underground in this country, you will see somebody who says a contractor, he wants to construct road, he's uprooting them mindlessly. They uproot, they cut. So, you, I know they, even the, the service providers themselves are so frustrated by what is happening to them. So, we need hyper connectivity because of the Internet of Things. If you are going to just think about how many things you have in your house and how many we are here, and look at the kind of bandwidth you require to connect everybody and give you access that the moment you, 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 you press a button, your, your fridge in the house will come on or go off, or one cage will open for your dog to get food, and all those kind of level of connectivity that we require. So I will proceed. Now, what are the benefits of space technologies? As much as you can see, just put it there. We have sustainable development goals. If you ever read the, the sustainable development goals, you will notice that the United Nations is looking at eradication of poverty. If poverty must be eradicated, we need technologies that can do a whole lot of things. And the terrestrial technologies are really not meeting up with these requirements. 
So what do, where do we go? We look at space. And space has not failed, as like we can see, because where the capacity does not exist on land, the capacity is there. Today we receive weather reports. The government tells you that we should prepare because there's going to be flooding. Where does that information come from? There are satellites up there that are observing the movements up there in the skies and that can predict and tell you in this situation, this period, this period, so and so things are going to happen. Now, we need uh, that connectivity which we have emphasized. What about global security? Thank God we have, uh, I, I was so happy when um, you were reading out, uh, acknowledging those who are here, and I see the presence of our armed forces heavily here. They cannot do much except they are empowered. And empowerment they require is information. Global security, under normal circumstances, space technologies are deployed for global security, like border surveillance, airspace policing, even the control of irresponsible projects, what they call responsible business. The immigration need to know when they, maybe they drop pushers, where they are passing through, when they are likely to arrive where. That satellite monitoring our space, both the airspace and the ground. They will be able to know, the immigration will know who are the people, why, who are the people moving in a line coming to, towards Nigeria. Or where are they, where are they armed? Because one of the problems that our security have is that they are illicit arms infiltrating the nation, the country, from what directions? On the ground you can never see. But when you have access to space, technology, the satellites, they have, you can be able to monitor and everybody will be able to keep tab on what is really going on and how arms are being moved to be able to say a stitch in time saves mine. But when they have arrived already, what do you have to do? So we look at the uh, responsible business means monitoring and control of illicit cross-border trades such as drugs, narcotic firearms, human trafficking and a lot of other things. So economy, what of the economy? The economy today, satellites are used to what we used to do before to explore them, go, we do sounding, the resonance and all those things to be able to locate where minerals are, where oil is, where gold deposits are. Today, satellites from up there can be able to beam and infiltrate and tell you these are the kind of things. And they give them give deliberate information to farmers for you to know in this area it's not everywhere you can plant cocoa. Cocoa is very good lucrative. It's not everywhere you can plant palm oil, palm trees. So scientific research is driven by this specific. And we also know also that space uh, there have been some space inventions that have just thrown over these ones. Some space inventions we have like uh, some of us are using scratch resistant lenses. The glasses you see that are glass scratch resistant were in, uh, invented by NASA or some other space users because of the activity up there. And they now brought them down to us as a listen them. Even the ear thermometer. Over there they will need to measure the temperatures. The temperature of maybe the stars, the temperature of heavenly bodies that you cannot go close. They have to invent the thermometers there and then they now apply it for human use also here. We have such this thing. Uh, some people use braces. If you have used braces, you know the braces they have, they put some people put they put wires in your teeth. And the once you try to open your mouth, but the pro space technology they were developed transparent braces that you do now. I mean, if you laugh, smile, nobody knows that you are wearing braces, things like that. And many others, memory pillows, filter, water filters, and all this. Some of them all have their roots. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay. So, I will talk about the 
first table was showing us the digital competitiveness. Then even in a, among the advanced economies, we still note that they have not really fully, if you check that table, you see, some people were down, down, down at 50, just above average, whereas the most competitive today in the world by the current re uh, record statistics is Denmark. This table is, um, is older than the first table. The first table is the most current. And Denmark has been leading all the, in terms of um, the, the, this in their digital competitiveness. That means their readiness and ability to adapt and implement digital economy. And it's a man uh, if you check all two, and you will not see African countries. But what you see in between them is the same. Okay. What you see where the seems the blue is not hitting the roof, it's gaps that exist. So if they, they as, as far as they have gone technologically, see how gaps, you can imagine, you can imagine where we are today. So, but space technology is being deployed, and I even know that the American government was paying space operators or space merchants to close certain gaps, some gaps in their country, especially in the rural areas. Next, please. Next, please. Okay, this was in fourth the table we are that we are going to can go up, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Okay. So the question now arises, do we should we leverage on space technology? Here we say inevitably yes. Inevitably yes. If Nigeria must assume its position as a leading economy in Africa and then move ahead to compete at the world stage, we need to leverage. Leveraging on space technologies does not actually mean you, you start. Okay, we have a, a, a satellite. I, I, I think somebody from NICOM out will be here. We will be here. We've met in another forum before, and we've talked about how do we use what we have to at least get close to where we should be. And apart from that, if you don't have it and your neighbor has that, why not buy, borrow, pay from your neighbor, get it from your neighbor, get yourself lifted from where you are to where you should be. So, turn and uh, from all of this. So, should Nigeria live on this? We say yes, because we need broadband. Currently, our broadband penetration is at 47.36. Our fixed, uh, we need uh, fixed broadband infrastructure to be accelerated. It's really suffering a lot of um, hindrances. Wireless broadband, which is what we need the space to provide. For us. And um, like my my boss has said earlier, the ABC has said that space SpaceX is a uh, almost satellites have been licensed to launch in Nigeria. Um, the national broadband plan actually anticipated the use of satellites. The use of satellites. And the commission is in the process of implementing that part, even if it means subscribing to make sure that our institutions, federal institutions, institutions are all connected because that is our knowledge base. If they are connected, we are going to produce a new generation of uh, uh, Nigerians who are knowledgeable and who are skilled. So, firstly, that we recommend that um, with this our recommendation, but um, for time's sake, these recommendations, I want to pray, um, Mr. Chairman, that um, these recommendations should not be buried. Because what you have started here is wonderful. We have a, 
We also were part of an atom um, conference like this, and um, we, we we should not sit back and assume things will just happen. Whatever we have got, gotten as a learning curve, let us put it together. Let us approach. Nigerian Society of Engineers need to start, sit up or even stand up, not even sit, but stand up. Let us engage. Let Nigerian Society of Engineers be in the lead. Knowing solutions that are available, let us push both National Assembly and the government itself at the federal, state, and state level. Because the top uh, tier of the government is at the first agency of uh, the local. So there is a compelling need for stakeholders and professional bodies such as the Nigerian Society of Engineers to step up sensitization for us and uh, engagement with relevant policymakers and influencers to drive home the enormous benefits accruable to the nation by leveraging on space technologies. There is a, a, a problem. We have seen the solution. It is for us to adopt the solutions and we believe Nigeria will be better for it. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for that presentation. Please put your hands together once again for the previous speaker. Thank you very much. Okay, at this point, we'll take a um, few questions. I'd like to congratulate the presenter. It was a very good job done. To cut it short, because we have a very little time, the going forward, which is what you are particular about, it rests squarely on you, Chief, and the DG Nasdaq. These are the space, recognized space agencies in Nigeria. And we have, oh, including Nikonsent, we must come up with strategies to meet with the president. One, we need to stop agencies that go outside the country to go and buy data. Let them procure it locally. Secondly, we have to deploy these technologies at the right places. It is enough to jumpstart our economy. If we stop oil theft, if we stop illegal mining, if we enhance agriculture, if we sustain income, from the maritime domain, Nigerian economy will jump up. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'm Abdul Kadir from the Nigerian Communications Commission. I also would like to thank the inaugural speaker. It was a fantastic presentation. I think we can give him another rousing round of applause. Thank you very much. Uh, mine is just a comment, like the first. Uh, speaker now to the Institute of Space uh, Engineers to say that um, while we're leveraging on space technologies, um, perhaps now is also the right time for uh, the Institute to look at how we can leverage on this um, space uh, service providers on um, where housing that technology locally. So, you know, where we can see uh, a lot of activity in the space sector and uh, a lot of these uh, companies are providing broadband to accelerate our digital economy. So while we're moving forward with that, it's a good time for us to also engage uh, so that we locally can harness uh, this technology and at least warehouse it locally for skills development and acquisition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mine is also a uh, contribution. I'm Eko Morobadika, representing the Commandant National Defense College. I've had it said severally that the problem we have in Nigeria, which you also ascribe to, is that our technology base is shallow. And um, I agree sometimes that we can make use of the very bad situation we have. And I said, technology roots is more important than the base. The base is what we are seeing. But there's something under the base which I call technology roots. And this technology roots lies in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. How do we ensure that the knowledge base or the knowledge ecosystem 
is enhanced through our educational system. For instance, we said that Jokuta is not working, so we cannot produce tanks, we cannot produce aircraft. But we know today there are materials, carbon fiber, that we can use to do this that doesn't require those steel. So the knowledge base for me is important, and that brings me to the suggestion I want to make to the institution. If you go abroad, you see institutions like this sponsoring programs and courses. What are we doing in Nigeria? Because you ascribe to it that it's no more what you read, but what you can do. How can the institution, over time, ensure that they bring home these skills to our teaming population? Thank you very much. I think with the presentation, because you have already opened up so many areas, which of course I believe that uh, we definitely benefit everyone. Um, my own um, contribution is going to be on the recommendations. Probably we are going to probably add one or two to the recommendations. Uh, the issue is this. Nigerian investors, we need to get hold of them. Country, uh, 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 the country cannot do everything in the nation. That Nigeria cannot do everything on its own and get the required uh, results. So it's going to be a good idea to actually try to find some of these investors locally to invest because normally when you look at it, when you say satellite technology for instance, a lot of money has to go in there. You are going to pay for the insurance. Even, can I just say something? Insuring one of our satellites that we have already launched to get an insurance company or insurance companies in Nigeria has been a very serious issue. That we have to tell them to partner with some companies in abroad. So in bringing that area, we have to look at that in such a way that we have to bring in our investors. Let them start thinking about investing in R&D, not just to be calling people from abroad. Because like now we have already licensed some companies from abroad, and then all these people they come around and then take our money away. All right. So how how do we benefit from it? So we have to let them know, as they are actually spending, because a lot of them just believe that when they invest within one month, they want to get their money back. r and is not like that. We need, to, we need to now find a way to convince them. Probably NICE can probably find a way to organize probably a symposium or a workshop or whatever you want to call it, in such a way that we bring some, some of these investors in Nigeria so that let them come and have feeling on how to invest in space technology. And also our youth. See, based on what you said, we have a lot of money to make from digital economy. Alright? We know that for this area now we have the satellite. The satellite is there, but cannot do the actual job. That is the South Atlantic Telecommunication uh, uh, Cable, that is, is in Lagos. But the what what, what we need for uh, IoT and some other uh, mobile uh, technology, I think uh, we need higher than like that. So space technology. Because there are so many specialized satellites that are meant for some of these things. Only one satellite, the concert, can do the job. So many satellites for different applications. There might be communication satellites, but different applications. So if people are saying that, ah, since we have satellites, uh, why is it that our satellites cannot see uh, Boko Haram or see whatever? Because they don't know. And meanwhile, you organize some of these uh, uh, fora and you tell them, even some professors don't even know what it is. The difference between communication satellites and imagery satellites. We won't say that. So I think it's going to be a good idea if we can just try to develop that. As we now, it's into the inaugural Dr. Umar Sani and Dulai.